thanks for watching and today's video is about the Cauchy principal value which is a neat way of evaluating improper integrals but just be careful and here's what I mean by that so suppose you want to evaluate the integral from minus 1 to 1 1 over x dx first of all the fundamental theorem of calculus, be super careful, it does not apply here. Because if you look at the graph of the function, 1 over x, it's not only discontinuous at 0, but it's very badly discontinuous at 0. So it does this horrible jump at zero, which means you cannot really apply the FTC for this. So don't even try, it's not good. In calculus, you learn that, in fact, this improper integral diverges, so the correct way of doing this would be to split this up at zero, so it has a discontinuity at zero, and evaluate each integral separately. And what this really means is, you take the limit as t goes to 0 minus of the integral from minus 1 to t of 1 over x dx, plus, I don't know, the limit as, um, at, let, let's use a different variable just to emphasize. s goes to 0 plus from s to 1 of 1 over x dx. Again, I want to emphasize for improper integrals, those two things are, those two variables are different. You're not allowed to take the same variable. And essentially what you're doing, you're saying, well, to evaluate this integral, let's calculate the integral from 1 to a very small number, sorry, from minus 1 to a very small number, and the integral from a very small number to 1, and let's see if we can add those two areas. Well, if you do that, then you get, you know, use the FTC. So this is limit as t goes to 0 minus of ln of absolute value of t minus ln of absolute value of minus 1 plus the limit as s goes to 0 plus of ln of 1 absolute value of 1 minus ln of absolute value of s. Well, and don't forget about the absolute value. Number one mistake I see is people forgetting about this. Well, ln of absolute value of minus 1, it's ln of 1, which is 0. So this term disappears. And this is ln of 0 minus. But if you take absolute values, 0 minus is like minus 0 0.0001. If you take absolute values, it becomes 0 0.0001. So it really becomes ln of 0 plus, which is minus infinity. So the first part is minus infinity, which makes sense because uh, this thing is negative. So if you find plus infinity, it's a problem. And the second part, even easier, ln of 1, that's 0, um, 0, and then we get minus ln of 0 plus, which is minus minus infinity, which becomes infinite. So, the improper integral here, it's minus infinity plus infinity. And in calculus, you learn that Minus infinity plus infinity, you conclude that this improper integral diverges. Basically, you cannot add those two up because this is minus infinity and this is infinity, so you would just conclude diverges. Okay, but what if you like Cauchy and you're like, man, I really want this to converge. In particular, notice there is a symmetry involved here, right? Even though this area is minus infinity and this area is infinity, they should cancel out. And the question is, how can you define the improper integral so that it actually cancels out? And this is what's called the 
Cauchy principal value. It's a way of defining values of improper integrals if they diverge. And this is called PV. So not like pi m something. <laughs> PV, so principal value integral of 1 over x dx. Here's what you do. You essentially let s and t be the same thing. So and let's use epsilons because we like epsilons. So PV of 1 over x dx equals the following. Let me illustrate with a picture. Namely, again, here you have the function 1 over x. And all you're doing is, from the bad discontinuity, you're taking out an interval of the form minus epsilon epsilon. In other words, you're just integrating where the same points, the points are the same. So the definition is then simply that's the limit as epsilon goes to zero plus, I guess, of the integral of the interval minus one one, except you remove just a little piece of size epsilon. So I guess two epsilon here. So 1 over x dx, and what this is, it is limit as epsilon goes to 0 plus. Here it's integral from minus 1 to minus epsilon, 1 over x dx, plus integral of epsilon to 1, 1 over x dx. And you might say, well, what's the difference? Difference is really subtle. In the previous example, you're taking two separate limits. So you're splitting up this into two limits, and you take the two separate limits. Here, you're first summing them up, and then you take limits. And it turns out this is slightly like more general, I guess, but uh, sorry, slightly less general, but it gives you at least a concrete answer. So. So let's see, now let's evaluate this junk. So this is limit epsilon goes to zero plus of, again, you take ln of absolute value of minus epsilon minus ln of absolute value of minus one plus ln of absolute value of one minus ln of absolute value of epsilon. Well, ln of one is just zero ln of absolute value of minus 1, it's ln of 1, which is also 0. And epsilon is positive, so this becomes ln of epsilon, and this is ln of epsilon. So you're taking limit as epsilon goes to 0 of ln epsilon minus ln epsilon. And again, you're first taking the difference and then you take the limit. That's the subtle thing. In uh, the improper integral, you first took the limits to get something like minus infinity plus infinity, and then you, know, you sort of took the sum, which you said was not defined. Here, you first take the difference, and then you take the limit. So really, we're taking limit epsilon goes to zero plus of the function zero. And the function 0 always has value 0, so the limit is 0. And you see the two different approaches. Before, we just said, well, one piece is negative infinity, the other one is infinity. We don't know how they cancel out, so we said that it diverges. Here, it's a bit more subtle. Here, we say, hey, they actually cancel out. So for finite epsilon, each piece is zero, and if you take epsilon go to zero, that quantity that's canceled out is still zero. And turns out it is the same answer as the FTC, but that's not always true. I, I think for, if you take like tangent or something, well, technically, if you take tangent at pi over two minus tangent of minus pi over 2, I guess, you know, ln of secant of pi over 2 minus ln of secant of minus pi over 2. Strictly speaking, um, 
I think the answer would give you know infinity minus infinity so even with the FTC you couldn't conclude anything but really if you do this Cauchy principle value you would find that the area between the two they cancel out okay not only is this too useful for calculus here to give you an answer where an answer doesn't exist but it's basically very good uh, um, it's great if f has a certain singularity. Like here, f was very badly discontinuous at zero, and the principal value gave you an answer. And this is true in general. If f has a singularity at x, the principal value helps you study that singularity, even though technically it's not defined. So, and in fact, there is something called the principal value distribution. So think of distributions as uh, so generalized functions, like the Dirac delta distribution. It's technically not a function, but a distribution. Then the principal value distribution of u okay, is simply defined as the limit as epsilon goes to 0 plus of the whole interval r, except, again, just as before, you just subtract an interval of the form minus epsilon epsilon. So r without minus epsilon epsilon of u of x over x dx. And this is great to study, you know, uh, um, I guess if you as a uh, singularity at zero, and also what I've read, it's useful because I believe this is sort of related to the Fourier transform of the heavy side function where the heavy side function is this function that has this jump at zero. And I don't quite know the details, but I know it's useful in Fourier transforms and in general in distribution theory. So uh, I hope you like this little excursion into calculus and improper integrals. Uh, if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.